Hello and welcome to the HGC. Today's video is going to be no power issue on a PS4 1215A or B and this will apply to any PS4 that has the button as opposed to the touch sensor. Uh, this is a good example video of reasons why you shouldn't follow YouTube videos blindly uh, because no matter how accurate the description, your problem can be something entirely different. As this customer found out after purchasing a power supply and bringing them both to me to install it, uh, we found out that it was in fact not his power supply for the reason for his system not having power. And he would have saved uh, about 40 bucks had he just brought it to me to do the repair. <laughs> so uh, always, always, always understand that just because your symptoms are identical to their symptoms does not mean that their problem is your problem. And if you try to fix something that is not your problem, I guarantee you, you will make it your problem or get so frustrated you beat your hammer to death with the hand. Uh, excuse me, beat your system to death with a hammer, not beat your hammer to death. All right, let's get to the video. This video is going to be for basically moderate to advanced individuals who already know how to uh, solder and are familiar with entirely disassembling a PS4 Model 1215A. Uh, as you notice by the button, some people m actually mistake this for a different sub model but it's not it's actually a busted power button okay what I'm using is a exacto knife to get underneath the button very gently lifting it up as I desolder each side each time I do that the button will come up a little bit okay and you got to be very very gentle while doing this you do not want to rip the contact pads off it's ever so slight a twist of the exacto knife while it's underneath and then just lightly get the solder to melt a little bit and then give it a very gentle twisting motion you'll feel it go up a little ways and then switch over to the other side and repeat until the legs become free on one side and then immediately this almost the second you touch it on the other side it will actually free up now I'm using a standard flux on it and this is lead free solder so use the appropriate flux uh, the button replacement that we will be putting on can be purchased on eBay very cheaply. Uh, I will put a link in the video description if you actually plan on doing this yourself. But please, 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 please trust me when I tell you completely disassembling these game systems to this level for this type of repair is not for younger kids and not for anybody who has never opened a game system or anything complicated and wasn't able to put it back together using every single last screw. If you are not capable of putting something together and not having screws left over, do not do this repair. Uh, you will wind up with a game system that instead of not having power will not be capable of working whatsoever. This video is another example of uh, my telling everybody just because you got no power doesn't mean it's your power supply. The individual that brought me this game system brought me a power supply with it to repair his game system. <laughs> so he spent uh, about 40 bucks on a power supply that he just flat did not need. Okay, so uh, now he's got to deal with trying to figure out what to do with it. So you see how that came off? Nice and neat. 
Now, at this point, we can kind of clean up the solder by just touching it up. Now, you can solder wick this away if you like, but it's not necessary. Just clean up the pads a little bit by touching it with a soldering iron, and that's all you need to do. From that point, clean up the old flux even though it looks good at this point you'll notice that it's starting to get dark you don't want to keep using that flux it'll get darker and gummier as you go so grab a q-tip some isopropyl alcohol preferably 91 percent 50 51 percent is usable but you really don't want to use something with such a high water content 91 percent is ideal uh, higher alcohol levels usually get much more expensive and is really not necessary for this type of repair but clean up all that old solder flux and then reapply a fresh coat of new solder flux now you'll notice I'm moving the board around because I'm looking for the button <laughs> that I misplaced yes I am narrating this after the fact okay so I think I found the button here just a minute uh, let's get this centered back in the screen and then look around for the button oh oh okay so we're gonna apply the flux flux apparently I found the button we're gonna apply the flux and then attach the button for this you'll need a soldering iron uh, standard soldering iron will be fine for this particular job it doesn't need to be a really small tip but you will need a good quality pair of tweezers preferably with an angle on it like dental tweezers you can buy them on eBay as well uh, I'll post a link down below if you wanna purchase them as well but just hold some pressure on it keep it in tack one side lightly and then switch hands put some downward pressure on the port and then solder on the other side that one you'll go a little better you're gonna get it hotter you'll put some downward pressure not a whole super lot just enough to feel it go down and then switch back to the other side and clean up and make sure the other side seats down you want to make sure that the solder does not bridge from one leg to the next because if it does the button won't work uh, it's not a real major problem on this particular type of port because the legs are fairly far apart although when you're looking at that little button it's a whole lot smaller <laughs> okay so once we get that done I'm going to clean it up again with some isopropyl alcohol and we are basically done but we want to test the functionality of the button and make sure it's actually going in and whatnot and make sure it's not gummed up with a lot of flux from the uh, cleanup. So let's take a look here. We'll get some. I uh, think I got my dental pick out. Yep, wrong one. But uh, just used it to double check to make sure there was no solder in between the legs. Just to kind of dig some of the black out, which is fine. Uh, you don't want to scrape or anything just very light touch and then I used a the sharp uh, the flatter end to press in and if I'm not mistaken it felt a little hard to press so I went ahead and added a liberal amount of isopropyl alcohol pressed the button a couple of times and then cleaned it up which is basically exactly what I actually did so I'm remembering correctly <laughs> all right so at this point clean off the isopropyl alcohol uh, give it a, a good five minutes to allow any moisture in the port to actually evaporate and then reassemble the system now I'm not going to show you disassembly and reassembly because you should know how to do that already if you're watching this video and if you don't you should not be doing it at all well that's it for the video I do have a couple of giveaways listed uh, I want to get up a ps4 but if nobody's participating why should I put it up I've had 
a whole of eight dollars worth of donations to help provide free repairs for kids and you know what if you guys aren't gonna step up then I'm just gonna give away the, the other stuff uh, that I have currently listed and maybe one more item that's of decent quality value because truthfully eight bucks it'll cost me eight bucks to ship the first item I'm giving away so uh, if, if you guys are not going to help me out with the giveaways uh, or the free repairs why should I give away your stuff I'll see you every 10,000 viewers or something uh, every 10,000 subscribers like all the other channels do okay but if you want me to actually be giving stuff away you need to actually be supporting the channel. Stay safe. Happy gaming, everybody.